One of my favourite smart home things are these 4 inch touchscreens that I have mounted on either side of our bed. These are Tuya T6e devices that run Android and I've hacked them to show Home Assistant dashboards. They make me feel like I'm living in a fancy hotel, I freaking love them. I made a whole video about them last year, but I'm told that hacking these panels in the same way is no longer possible. Thankfully, other companies have figured out how cool these Wii panels are, so there are some new kids on the block that you can use to do the same thing. In this video, we're going to take a look at how surprisingly easy it is to get interactive Home Assistant dashboards up on the Shelly wall display and the Sonoff NS Panel Pro, especially when you compare it to the other panels I have, which I had to pull apart and plug in USB cables into in order to hack it. Am I going to recommend one over the other? They're both awesome, but I'm going to have to recommend the Shelly over the NS Panel. It's far easier to set up with Home Assistant, and it comes with a built-in 5 amp relay, as well as a bunch of other cool features. Let's take a deeper look. On the face of it, the Shelly wall display and the NS Panel Pro are pretty similar. In fact, they're both almost the same as the original Tuya T6e and S6e panels I already have in my smart home. They all run Android, they look and feel pretty much the same, and it wouldn't surprise me if they all came out of the same factory. The thing that differentiates them though is the apps that run on them and the attitudes of the companies that sell them. This video is not going to be a review of the apps that run on these panels, their out of the box capabilities, or the ecosystems that they're a part of. I purely want to use these panels to show Home Assistant dashboards, and that's what I'm going to focus on today. But the Shelly has got a ton of functionality built into it that could be fun to look at in a future video. If that's something you want me to do, let me know in the comments. I bought my Shelly display on Amazon for about £120 sterling. In fact, I bought everything here with my own money, so this is not a sponsored review. This has been funded by all the donations people have made to my channel, either with a super thanks or a PayPal donation. If you're one of those people, thank you so much. You have made this video possible. One of the main differences between the Shelly and the Sonoff is that the Shelly comes with a built-in relay or switch. This means that you can install this into an existing light switch hole in your home and still control whatever lights you have wired into that. For my tests, I wired up the Shelly into this cool desk mount that I 3D printed. And before you go off at me in the comments, I know that I shouldn't be using stranded wire without ferrules for this, but it's only going to be switched on for a few hours for this test. I promise I'll hire a proper electrician when I finally install them into my walls, and I recommend that you do the same thing. Once the Shelly has booted up, the first thing to do is go to their settings and connect it to your Wi-Fi network. It'll probably need to be a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network. It will, at this point, probably automatically be discovered by Home Assistant, and you'll be able to control the built-in relay and see the values for the built-in temperature, humidity, and light level sensors. To display a Home Assistant dashboard on it though, we'll need to first update the firmware, and you can do that by clicking this handy visit device link in Home Assistant, or going to the IP address of the Shelly in a web browser. Go to the settings page, then firmware, and update. At the time of recording, you need to have at least the 2.3.0 beta firmware installed to deploy Home Assistant dashboards, but by the time you're watching this, that may no longer be a beta. After the firmware has updated, your device will reboot, and now the rest of the steps are done on the device itself. To make this whole thing easier for you, I've written an article on my Home Automation Guy website which shows all of the steps that you need to go through to display these dashboards. I've linked to that in the description below. On the Shelly device, swipe or click to the settings page, go to network, and then tap on Home Assistant. You'll now be prompted to do another update which will take a couple of minutes, and then it'll reboot. Once it's back online, go back to the settings and network page and tap on the Home Assistant option again. You should now see your Home Assistant server listed here, or if it's not, you have the option to type in your own URL. Enable it with the toggle, and then use the pencil to type in the full URL for the dashboard that you want this device to display. This is the one that you see in your address bar when you visit that dashboard in a web browser. Hit save, and the dashboard should be visible when you hit the Home Assistant button on the bottom toolbar. You'll need to log into Home Assistant the first time you access it and tick that Keep Me Logged In box. There's no way to remove the bottom toolbar, by the way, which might annoy some people. I think it makes perfect sense for it to be there so that you can switch between the native Shelly functionality, like the button to turn on and off the relay, and the Home Assistant dashboard. But I'm sure there are going to be haters out there. But you have to admit, it was pretty damn easy to get this device to show a Home Assistant dashboard. 
I really admire and respect Shelly for the effort they're putting into supporting and playing nice with Home Assistant. A lot of manufacturers out there try and fight against open platforms, and have even tried to sue Home Assistant or their community members for daring to make their devices work in an open way. This is what I meant that the big difference between these companies is the way that they approach the open home. The Sunoff is unfortunately a bit more of a pain to get the dashboard onto, as they fall more into the let's not make it easy for these open source people camp, and want people to live inside their own ecosystem. And I get it, that's how their business works. The Sonoff NS Panel Pro is a similar price to the Shelly, and it looks very similar when you're taking it out of the box. Unlike the Shelly, it has no built-in relay, but it does require a neutral wire to be available wherever you wire it into. It also fits into a standard UK or European back box, as long as it's deep enough. When I first moved into this house and replaced my light switches with smart switches, I had to get the electricians to replace all of the back boxes with super deep ones to accommodate these big backs, but I'm glad I've done it now. For this test, I wired the Sonoff into the same type of 3D printed desk mount with all of the same caveats about knowing that this isn't ideal and that I won't be leaving it plugged in here long term. And once again, I've written all the instructions that I'm about to show you into an article on my Home Automation Guy website. The rest of this video is going to fly through them and they're pretty complicated and boring steps, so go check those out on my blog if you want to do this at home. The first step is to power it on and then go through the on-screen setup. You need to choose your location and connect it to your Wi-Fi. I then had to add it to the eWe link app on my phone, which is annoying, by scanning the QR code and following the instructions. We now need to turn on developer mode on the device and enable ADB access, which lets us connect to it from our computer to install a bunch of stuff onto it. This is similar to what I had to do with my original T6E panels, but thankfully Sonoff let you do this remotely rather than having to crack it open and plug in a USB cable. To turn on developer mode, open the device in the eWe Link app and go to the device settings by clicking the three dots in the top right. Then scroll down and repeatedly click on the device ID item, just keep mashing it until it tells you that developer mode has been turned on. Then click the new developer mode that appears and turn on ADB. ADB stands for Android Debug Bridge, which opens up a back door into the guts of Android and lets you mess with things. It's sort of like SSH for Android. To Sonoff's credit, at least they put this option in their app. Many other smart home manufacturers that use Android make this very difficult. Once we have ADB access, we go back to our device, then go into Settings, About, and make note of its IP address, as we're going to need that next. The next steps are all done on your computer, in the command prompt or shell if you're on a Mac or Linux. Your computer needs to have the ADB drivers and the Android platform tools installed, which are linked in my article. These get extracted to a folder on your hard disk, which you then need to run these commands from. The ADB commands are all usually ADB followed by a bunch of stuff, and you can copy and paste them out of my article directly into your window if you want to. I'm not going to go through all of them here. But the gist of it is that you remotely connect to the IP address of your panel using the ADB commands and then install a bunch of stuff onto the panel. The first thing you need to install is the ultra small launcher, which is sort of like the desktop of an operating system. Once that's installed, you need to send a command to invoke the home button, which lets you choose that launcher to be the default. Now each time you reboot the device, it'll show that desktop instead of the Sonoff stuff. From here, I recommend that you go to Settings and turn on the bottom navigation bar so you can go back and home like you can on an Android phone. Next, you need to update the web view, which is sort of like the web browser of the device. This is the thing that will render the Home Assistant dashboards properly, and it gets installed with another ADB command, and then you need to go back to the device, go to Settings, System, About, and then once again repeatedly tap the build number to enable developer mode. Then go back to the developer options, Click on Web View, and make sure the latest version is selected. For some reason, mine only had one version listed, and it works totally fine. Finally, I installed the fully kiosk browser to show my dashboards, which you can download directly from their website, and push over to the device with another ADB install command. Back over at the device, you should see the fully kiosk icon available in the launcher. Fire it up, and you can swipe in from the left-hand side to go to the settings. In the web content settings, you can specify a start URL, and that's where you can type in the URL of the Home Assistant dashboard you want it to load up. I'd also recommend going to the Device Management section and turning on the Launch on Boot option, so that this dashboard opens up every time you restart the device. 
Now, when you go back to the start URL or open Fully Kiosk again, it will load up the Home Assistant dashboard you typed in and ask you to log in. Make sure that the Keep Me Logged In box is ticked again. And there you go, two different panels both showing Home Assistant dashboards. As I said before, I really have to recommend the Shelly here over the ANS Panel Pro. It's more flexible due to its built-in relay and sensors, it's a darn sight easier to set up with Home Assistant dashboards, and in my testing, it feels a bit more performant and responsive when you use it. Don't get me wrong, the screens on both of them are really nice, and the touchscreens work pretty well on both. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the same hardware after all. I personally would use the Sonoff in places where I don't need all the bells and whistles of the Shelly, like for my bedside panels. That bar at the bottom would really annoy me, and I find the clean user interface of a Home Assistant only panel much more appealing. What do you guys think? Have you got these running at home? Let me know in the comments below if there's anything I've missed or something that I'm not aware of. And whilst you're down there, please subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. If you're feeling really generous, I'd appreciate a donation to the channel via a super thanks or a PayPal donation. These donations help me buy things like the panels I just showed you in this video and the S3 box ESP devices that I'm currently testing out with the Home Assistant voice stuff. Hey old mate. Activate cooking. A video about that will be coming real soon, so make sure you're subscribed so that you know when I release it, and then together we can make your home smarter.